at one point or another, you are going to have to release yourself from depending on the world's economic system. And the sooner, the better. Because I promise you, that economic system is not designed to favor you who are righteous and honest. Now, I've told you about Elijah. God is calling forth Elijah's in this last day. I've told you about Elisha. God is calling forth Elisha's in this last days. But perhaps the most prominent example of the prophetic ministry in the mountain of economy is Joseph. And so God is looking for Joseph's in these last days who will be given divine insights into the emancipation of a nation's economy. Welcome to Maximize Live, a television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast today. This is Maximize Life, where we encourage you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olawuri, your host and the senior pastor of New Wine Church, that's Woolit, London. Today, we are looking at a message by Dr. Tayo Adiemi, the founding pastor of New Wine Church, London, who has gone home to be with the Lord. Today's message is titled, Possess the Gates of Your Enemies. My God possess the gates of your enemies. Be blessed as you watch this program. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people with power in the world who influence the economy of the world and they don't do it for the good of the majority. They do it for their own selfish reasons. And we must take control from those people. Tell your neighbor, possess the gates of your enemies. Number three, there is no security in the accumulation of wealth. Pastor Tayo, are you telling me not to save or have investments? I will never tell you that. It's wise, it's prudent to save, it's prudent to have investments. All I'm saying is don't place your hope in those things. All your investments can become worthless overnight. And you have seen that happen. All your money can vanish overnight. One crisis, one crisis and all your sources of wealth can be wiped out in one day, your trust must be in God. Amen. There is only one secure investment. There is only one risk-free investment, and it is investment in the kingdom of God. This is how Jesus put it in Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21. Don't store up treasures here on earth where they can erode away or may be stolen. Living Bible. Store them in heaven where they will never lose their value. Tell your neighbors, store your treasures in heaven where they will never lose their value. And as safe from thieves, if your profits are in heaven, your heart will be there too. Well, stop and think. Number four, the economy of God's kingdom is far superior to any earthly kingdom. That is just stating the obvious as we have seen from this verse. So today we're talking about the mountain of the economy. We also refer to it as the mountain of the Canaanites. That word Canaanite means two things. On the one hand, it means peddler, merchant, trafficker, or trader. On the other hand, it means to be humbled, to be brought low, to be brought under subjection. So ladies and gentlemen, on this mountain of the Canaanites, we see two forces, two factors at play here. The first one is greed, and the second one is poverty. Say greed, say poverty. The greed of a few people results in the poverty of a majority of people. They work together. And this is the way the world's economic system works. It is designed to make a few people rich and to keep the majority poor. What do you call a person? What do you call it? When one person wants to have it all at the expense of all other people. What's that? Greed, absolutely. So you see that greed and poverty go hand in hand. Wherever you see poverty, look closely, greed is not very far. Look in any poor nation on the earth today, you will find that there is greed and corruption in government and in business. Any poor nation under the earth, there's corruption and greed in government and in business. Now, God's economy is a direct antithesis 
to this principle. In God's economy, nobody is supposed to be poor. All right, you didn't hear me. I said in God's economy, nobody is supposed to be poor. When you look in the Bible, you will find that God established for the children of Israel a principle called jubilee. And jubilee was designed to be an amnesty for the redistribution of wealth. When a person has lost their wealth because of adversity or even foolishness, every 50 years they had the opportunity for their wealth to be restored back to them so that nobody would be poor. As you come into the New Testament, you see that principle at work in the early church. Go with me in your Bible to Acts chapter 4. Let's look at verses 32 to 35. Acts 4, 32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Jump to verse 34. Nor was there any among them who lacked. Nor was there any among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed to each as anyone had need. Let me read that passage to you from the New Living Translation. All the believers were of one heart and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own. They shared everything they had. Somebody say they shared everything they had. Verse 34, there was no poverty among them. Because people who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money to the apostles to give to others in need. Say they shared everything they had and there was no poverty among them. Can you see it right there, ladies and gentlemen, a direct affront to greed and poverty. They shared everything they had, no greed. There was no poverty among them, no poverty. Listen closely. In the heart of every human being, whether born again or not, whether spirit-filled or not, there are two forces fighting for control. How many forces? Jesus shows us those two forces in Luke chapter 16, verse 13. He said, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. He said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Tell your neighbor, you cannot serve God and mammon. Now listen closely. When it comes to money matters, you are either serving God or you are serving mammon. I don't care how loud you sang during the praise and worship. I don't care how fast you prayed in tongues when it was time to pray in tongues. You are either serving God or you are serving mammon. And in a few minutes, a bucket is going to pass in front of you and you are going to declare who you serve when that bucket comes. But that's not my purpose today. Here is the deal. You cannot overthrow the God of mammon from the mountain of economy if mammon rules in your heart. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot overthrow the God of mammon from the mountain of economy if mammon rules in your heart. In Mark chapter 3 verse 27, Jesus said, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. At one point or another, you are going to have to release yourself from depending on the world's economic system. And the sooner, the better. Because I promise you, that economic system is not designed to favor you who are righteous and honest. Are you listening to me today? Before you can be used by God to take this mountain of the economy, you must come out of the world system. Write down Revelation 18 and read the entire chapter if you can. But in the first five verses, you will see the Bible says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. When you obey God by removing yourself from under the control of mammon, When you obey God by removing yourself from the world's economic system, pastor, when you say remove myself, what exactly do you mean? Are you telling me to pull my money out of the world's economic system? No, pull your heart out. Pull your heart out. Are you hearing me today? When you do that, what does God promise you? Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Isaiah 1, 19, if you are willing and obedient, 
you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 60 verse 5, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you and the wealth of Gentiles shall come to you. Isaiah 61 verse 6, you shall eat the riches of Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast. I did not hear an amen. amen. Do you know that God can bring the wealth of the wicked into your hand? Not so that you can have 300 cars and 50 houses, but because God knows that you are just. God knows that you are righteous. God knows that when the wealth is under your control, you will use it to bring blessing and benefit to a large number of people. God is calling people to take this mountain, this mountain of the Canaanites, this mountain of the economy. Who are the people that God is calling to take this mountain? Who are those who are equipped to take this mountain from the spirit of mammon? The prophets of God. Somebody say prophets. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Prophets carry the grace to bring prosperity. Remember, apostles will be instrumental in taking the mountain of government. Prophets will be instrumental in taking the mountain of economy. Please, again, bear in mind, when we talk about apostles and prophets here, we're not talking necessarily of preachers who carry Bibles. There are apostles to the church and there are apostles to the nations. There are apostles to the church and there are apostles to the world. There are prophets to the church and there are prophets to the marketplace. Did you know that? So when you hear prophet, don't be thinking a person who stands in church and says, Thus saith the Lord. There are people in this room. God has anointed you and God is raising you up to be a prophet in the city. To be a prophet in the marketplace. When you go through your Bible you will find that prophets are always instrumental in bringing relief in the time of famine. Think about Elijah who prayed for rain after three and a half years. And the Bible says the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth its fruit. Think of Elisha who stood in Samaria when there was famine. The city was under siege. He said tomorrow about this time food will be so cheap you will not even believe it. He spoke to that widow woman, released an anointing in her life that released oil to cancel out her debts. So there is a prophetic anointing that brings blessing in the economy. Now I've told you about Elijah. God is calling forth Elijahs in this last day. I've told you about Elisha. God is calling forth Elishas in these last days. But perhaps the most prominent example of the prophetic ministry in the mountain of economy is Joseph. And so God is looking for Josephs in these last days who will be given divine insights into the emancipation of a nation's economy. I want you to think about Joseph in the Bible. This man was not, the Bible does not tell us that he had any particular economic or governmental skills purely on account of his prophetic gifting. Purely on account of his prophetic gifting. Eventually, he was put in charge of the majority of the wealth of the wealthiest nation in the world, the most powerful nation in the world at that time. It's like picking a man off the street who has no knowledge of economy in this recession and putting him in charge of the economy of America. Are you hearing me today? But I believe that in these last days, God is going to raise prophets like that and God is going to give them insight and he will show them where the treasures of nations are hidden. Do you believe that God hides treasures in nations? Do you believe that? Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. Which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has. And he buys that field. Listen to me. You don't need a prophetic gift to see a field. You don't need a prophetic gift to see the dirt in a field. But you need a prophetic gift to know that treasure is hidden in that dirty field. Now, when I talk about fields, don't think about a yard or a football field here. Remember, a definition of field is an area of human activity, a sphere of human knowledge. So, ladies and gentlemen, God is going to be sending many of you in this room into fields. 
And when you see the field, while others see the dirt, the negative circumstances in the field, God will show you the treasure in that field. Are you hearing me? Because you will carry a Joseph anointing. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro, seeking to make himself strong and mighty on behalf of those whose hearts are right towards him. God is looking for men with right hearts. He's looking for women with right hearts. He's looking for people who are not greedy. He's looking for people who are not trying to amass wealth for themselves. There are people who call themselves prophets, and all they do, they are prophets for profit. They are false prophets. Listen closely. Let me talk to you this morning. I'm not messing about. A, pro a false prophet is not just someone whose prophecy is inaccurate. A person's prophecy can be accurate and is still a false prophet. Was Balaam's prophecy accurate? Did he hear from God? Did he prophesy accurately about Israel? Absolutely. Yet the Bible called him a false prophet. Why? Because he was motivated by greed and personal profit. And God is going to sidestep and is going to expose such false prophets and is going to raise men and women with a humble heart. Men and women with a righteous heart. The Bible says the man who withholds grain will be cursed, but blessing will be on the head of him who distributes grain to the people. The Bible says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked are in authority, the people groan. God is going to unseat wicked people from the mountain of economy and is going to place righteous people there. Why could God trust Joseph with the wealth of Egypt? One man, one man who entered the nation as a slave. He had no credentials to his name. His, his CV was a blank paper. Yet God put him in charge of the wealth of Egypt. All the money of Egypt came into his hand. After they got, he got all their money, he got their land. Then he got their houses. And then he bought the people. They mortgaged themselves to him. But he dealt justly with them. He distributed food to them. The Bible says when the famine started, he opened the storehouses. People who control the economies of the world close the storehouses today. And God is going to take the key from them and put them in your hand because you will open the storehouses. Are you hearing me? There are some of you whose hearts are being stirred right now. Now, if you're getting excited about this message because you want to become a millionaire for yourself, just go to sleep. I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking about people who will bring emancipation to the masses. And when I say masses, I'm not just talking of believers. Because God wants to bless people. The Bible says he causes the rain to fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous. He causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. There are certain blessings that God does not discriminate. He wants to bless unbelievers too. Are you hearing me? God wants to break the power of greed in our land. And he wants to break the power of poverty in our land. And in the same way that God trusted Joseph, because Joseph's heart was right, because Joseph acted in the proper interest of the people, God will raise people in this house whose hearts will be right, and he can trust them because their attitude towards money is a right attitude. Now, Pastor Tayo, I feel God is, God is calling me to this mountain. He's calling me to take the mountain of economy. What do I need to do? Let me give you four things in closing. Number one, develop yourself. Educate yourself in matters of finance and economy. Become informed. Be informed. Become financially literate. Become financially competent. Become financially proficient. Tell your neighbor, develop yourself. Be informed. Don't be caught off guard. Yes, your prophetic gifting will come into place. But you also need wisdom and strategy. You need to understand the times to know what Israel ought to do. Number two, discipline yourself. If you yourself have not mastered money, then God will not put you in charge of it. If money controls you, you will not be able to control money. And you cannot preach what you don't practice. Tell your neighbor, discipline yourself. Be prudent. Number three, dedicate yourself. Jesus said, he who is faithful in little is faithful in much. You are not going to be faithful in much if you are not faithful in little. Two areas where you need to be faithful. How many areas? You need to be faithful in serving. Say serving. And you need to be faithful in giving. Say giving. 
How did you come about that, Pastor Tile? Well, Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Say to serve and to give. Say to serve and to give. And so God wants you to be dedicated, to be committed, to be devoted, to be faithful in serving and in giving. Be faithful in giving. If you are not faithful in giving when you are in control of just mere thousands, God will not put you in control of millions and hundreds of millions. Are you hearing me today? Listen, if you are not a faithful tither, that in itself is evidence that you are still under the grip of mammon. If you can't say amen, say ouch. But not only be faithful in giving, be faithful in serving. Be faithful in serving at work. Be faithful in serving in church. Listen closely. Anywhere you are called upon to serve, serve well. Serve with whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Listen closely. Someone is watching you right now who is capable of promoting you. Joseph was faithful in his father's house. He was faithful in Potiphar's house. He was faithful in prison. So it was easy for God to trust him with the palace. Number four, deliver yourself. Tell your neighbor, deliver yourself. Yes. Tell them, be released. Deliver yourself. Release yourself from the love of money. Remember, you cannot bind the strong man until you yourself are free from the grip of the strong man. Release yourself from the grip of mammon. You cannot, you cannot take bail if you yourself are a prisoner. You cannot set people free until you yourself are free. And until you are free from the love of money, until you are free from the grip of money, until you come to the point in your life that it doesn't matter whether you keep it or you give it, God is not going to trust you. There are people, if we just mention 5,000, they'll start shaking like a leaf. Be free. Amen. Are you hearing me today, people? God is calling us as a people to rise up and take back the gate of the economy, the mountain of the economy. And I know there are people in this room whom God is going to use. I see, ladies and gentlemen, not many days from now, the emergence of charitable organizations and aid agencies that will be so powerful that governments of nations will have to do their bidding. You know, nowadays, when you take aid into a nation, the government tells you what you can or cannot do, especially if you're a Christian agency and you go into a Muslim nation. Now, listen closely. We're coming to that day that we will dictate to those nations exactly how things are going to be. I believe God is going to raise aid agencies that will be more powerful, richer than some nations. I believe it's going to happen. It's the Joseph anointing. God is going to give us keys to the storehouses of the earth. But we need to get ourselves in line. We need to get ourselves in order. Some of you just need to go sort out your finances, your personal finances. It's a mess. Clean the mess up and bring order into your house so that God can trust you with much more. For the last time today, tell somebody for me, possess the gates of your enemies. Let us pray. I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you to be all that you can be. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen, and I will be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you happen to be in or visiting London, Essex, or Kent area of the United Kingdom, Come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, till the next time of Maximize Life, God bless you. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. For more details about the dynamic ministry of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk. 